Welcome to part three of my series on programming a tic-tac-toe simulator in C. Um, I'm just going to jump in here, so if you haven't seen parts one or two, you might want to go check those out. You um, should be able to find them basically where you found this, um, and definitely at my blog at aaron.baher.biz. Check there. All right, so part three here. Um, I just did part two yesterday, so I haven't really had much time to think about part three, which is fine because I said I'm doing this, making this up as I go. But the main thing is to make it smart enough to tie, because when we finished part two, it could play through a game and it understood winning conditions and blocking conditions, but the program is very stupid about picking moves otherwise, and so it kept it kept winding out, kept winding up with the same win for X. This this board right here. So we need to make it a little smarter about how it chooses moves. Um, now I thought about, you, you could almost just choose moves randomly, and most tic-tac-toe games would still end up in ties, but you, know, you could get this situation randomly, so that's not good enough. Um, so I got to thinking, okay, how do you choose a move as a person playing tic-tac-toe? How do you choose a move? If we say a, a game started out um, just with X and O, you know, each having one turn. If you're X, how do you choose where to go next? Well, generally, I think most people are either going to go here or they're going to go here. I think most people would take the center square because you're looking to get you're looking to make two of yours in a row so that you have a chance to win on the next turn. You're not going to go over here because, you know, that's not setting, you know, I mean, in theory it could be setting something up, but only if O is, is a complete idiot like in the like in our previous attempts. So you're not going to go there. You know, you're not going to go over here because, again, you're not setting anything up. So you're going to look for, you're going to look to make your one in a row turn into two in a row. You're going to go here, here, here or here. Okay, is how I figure it. Same thing with O. Let's say X let's say X does take the center. Well then O doesn't have a choice. O has to block. But let's say X was really you know, it, let's say X did go over here, then O is gonna go O is obviously gonna go in the center because that's the only place O can go that sets up two in a row. And then X is going to have to go here, and then the, you know, the whole thing ends up in a tie. So that's, that's what we're looking for. Um, but for the first move, you're basically just looking to pick any square. Um, and I thought, well, instead of just taking the first square like it was doing, I'd like it to randomly choose a square because you know we kind of want this to try all the possibilities. So we don't want to just try games that started in the corner. We want to try games where X started on the side or in the middle also. So if we look at the take a turn routine here, it looks for a block, or it looks for a win, then it looks for a block, then it looks for a play. Okay, And the first turn, it's always going to be looking for a play. It's always going to be looking for a play, you know, at least for the first four turns, in the first three, I guess. Because um, I guess it would take until the third turn for anyone to have two in a row and have any chances to win or block. Um, so it's this look for play routine, which, like I said, right now it's very simple because we just wanted to make it work. Um, that's what's going to have to get more complicated. So on the first turn, I'm thinking we just want to have X take a random square. And so then the question is, how do we know what turn it is? this routine doesn't know. The take a turn routine also doesn't know what turn it is. The play a game routine is the one that actually knows what turn it is because it's looping through the turns right here. So there's a couple possibilities. Play a game could pass the turn number to take a turn which could then pass the turn number to look for play. That's an option. Um, another option would be to use a global variable so that play a game could use the variable, could set it every time through, 
and look for play could read the global variable. Now, globals are generally frowned upon. Um, I am using a global variable to hold the board because all the routines have to access, or not all the routines, but most of the routines have to access the board, and so I don't want them to... Sometimes people will get into a situation where they're passing a pointer to a, a variable around between all their different routines, and to me that's that's kind of... It's doing extra busy work to try to avoid doing something um, and not really gaining anything. Um, the reason to avoid global variables is, isn't, isn't that there's something inherently dangerous about them, it's that they make things, they, they can make things confusing if you have a variable that's, that can be changed all over the place. Well, if you're passing a pointer to something all over the place, you're kind of in the same situation, it's just not called the same thing. So, anyway, um... So it could be a global variable. It could be passed between those three. Um, we could just have look for play, count the number of board spaces which are still available, and figure out from that. You know, if it if it looks and sees how many spaces there are and subtracts that from ten, it's going to know what turn it is. You know, if there's nine available, it's turn number one. But that's some extra calculation each time through if we have that, you know, it's, it's not a big deal because it's such a small program, but we don't want to add a bunch of extra calculation we don't need. So I'm thinking that out of those three options, I'm going to choose the first option I mentioned to pass the variable, pass the, pass the turn number along. Since there's only these three routines that have to know about it, it's, it's not a big deal. Um, I think it's worth keeping it local to those three rather than make it global, um, just on the, the general avoiding globals um, thing. So what we'll do here is, okay, so we're going to play, so right here is our turn number. I is the turn number, it turns 0 through 8. Um, and so we want to pass that to the take a turn routine. Okay, which means we need to change take a turn so that it accepts the turn number, just call it turn. And then when it calls look for play, it needs to pass the turn number along to that. And then look for play also needs to accept the turn number. Alright, so now look for, look for play can know what turn it is. And I'm just going to leave this loop here for now, we'll probably eliminate it later. So, if the turn is 0, then x is taking the first turn. So, we just want x to choose a random square. Now, I'm not sure exactly how the random function works in C, so I need to look that up. Yeah, okay, so it's in standard lib and it's just called random and it returns along. It seems like every language has a different random function. I always have to look and see, does it, is this one that returns, because some of them return a value, a, a decimal value between zero and one. Um, and that's what Perl does. Some of them will let you pass a number and then they'll give you a number between zero and that number. And then what C does is it just gives you a long, which is any number between one or any time or between zero and two to two to the thirty-first power minus one. So it's a thirty-two bit um, any thirty-two bit integer value. So so let's just get a random number. So that's going to be just a random number between 0 and some huge thing. Now we just want something between 1 through 9, right? So we just want 9 different possibilities, so we need to grab our modulus function again. Or what am I doing? Um, we need to... Emacs is trying to be helpful here, doing something weird to me. Um, 
All right, so if we take our random number, our possibly huge random number, and do a modulus 9, that's going to give us something between 1 and, or something between 0 and 8. The remainder of dividing something by 9 is always going to be between 0 and 8. And then to know, since our squares are labeled 1 through 9, we need to add 1 to that, so we get something between 1 and 9. And we want to play that spot. So we don't really need to save this in a variable. We've got that. There's our number. And we just need to go ahead and say that board spot is player, which is player x. So that takes care of turn number one. All right. What other possibilities are there? Let's, let's look at turn two. is turn number one since they're counting from zero. When O moves, I think I'd like to do the same thing, let O move randomly, because you know at that point there's there's nothing to do to block. There's not really any strategy necessarily to where you go. So I think we'll just let O move randomly. Now we can't just do the same thing we did here because one space is already taken. We can't take that space. So here's what I'm thinking. We, we still want to pick a random number between 1 and 9. And then we want to start looking at that spot and look through them all until we find one that's empty. Okay? So instead of calling it RAND, I'm going to call it START. And I'm going to have an END that's going to be the same thing as START. And then I'm going to increment START. Okay. Now let's think about this. Let's say our, our random number is 1. Okay. Then END is going to become 1, and START is going to become 2, and we're going to start counting at 2 and looking through the board numbers until we come around and back to round 1. That's fine. Let's say the random number, let's say START is 9, then START is going to become 10, and END is going to be 9. All right. We don't have a 10, so we need to make sure that when it hits 10, it wraps around to 1. So I'm going to say while START equals END, or not while well, start doesn't equal end, which it won't at the beginning, we need to loop around until it does. That's why I incremented start, because I want to say, okay, until, if I was writing this in Perl, I'd say until, but we don't have an until in C. Until start equals end, we're going to do this loop, and the first thing the loop needs to do is if start is greater than 9, put start back to 1. So that's why, how we'll handle the looping around at the end. Is Once it gets bigger than 9, it goes back to 1 and then comes up through the loop again. Alright, and now what do we do in this loop? We're looking to see if the space is clear. Board not block. If the space is clear, which if board start equals 0, then use it, set it to the player, and return. And uh, I guess we were, we were returning player before when it found one. Okay. So that's the second possibility. So we, we've got turn one taken care of and turn two taken care of. Those are both pretty simple. The question is, what do you do when you get to turn three and, and subsequent turns? So back to our design document here. What's the, I guess I already talked about this before, the process that goes through your brain, you know, like I said before, tic-tac-toe is so simple, you don't really think when you play it, I don't think. Um, you just, you know, you just see it. It's just obvious what you need to do most of the time. Um, 
because most of the time you're just blocking the other guy. But to get a computer, you know, to get a computer to do it, you've got to actually think about it. What exactly am I thinking as I figure out where to play next? Well, like I said, I, you know, I generally don't want to move somewhere where I'm not creating a possible win for myself or where I'm not blocking the other guy. So generally, where I want to move is into a row that has one of mine in two empty spaces so that I can make a possible win scenario for myself. So generally, I either want to go in one of these two to make this row a possible winner, or I want to go into either this one or this one to make you know this a, this a possible winner. So what I'm looking for, really, whoops, what I'm looking for, let me fix this here, okay, well, it's, it's confused because it thinks I'm trying to do a table, um, here, let's just make it right, okay. What I want to do is figure out, okay, I want a row that has one of my one of my markers in it. So if I'm X, I want one X and two spaces. That's what that boils down to, all that talking I just did. Now, in the win, in the find a win, look for win, whatever it was called, we did this right here to look for a row that had two of ours in the space. We added them up, and we found that, okay, if it adds up to two times the player, then it has two of that player's markers and the space. Now, this time we're only looking for one, so the question is, what do you get if you add that up? Like this, like this column right here, the first column, what do I get if I add up those three? Well, x is one, and the spaces are zero, so it's ad it adds up to one. All right. So let's come back here and think about whether that would work. Let's grab, just grab this. All right, so if we want to, let's see, I'm also going to need this, which tells it what rows to use. Okay, duplicating a little more of that win function than I thought I would, but that's okay. Um, all right, so we're going to look through the eight possible rows, and we add we add them up. But now it's not going to add up to two. Also, we don't need the, we don't have the winner block thing anymore. Now it doesn't add up two; it just adds up to one, and it would be one for x, and it'd be negative one for o. So that's still good. Multiply them by the player like that. But the question is, are there other scenarios that can also add up to one? And the answer is yes, because what if you have an X, an O, and an X? That also adds up to 1, doesn't it? 1 plus 1 plus negative 1 adds up to, adds up to 1. Okay. So how can we identify this top row and not identify the bottom row? Well, you could just look at the three squares, couldn't you? You could just look and say, is this square a space? Is this square a space? Is this square a space? And if any of the three are spaces, you know, then it's then it's what we're looking for. That would be one possibility. You could say, um, if this is true, and um, let's see, and the first space is equal to zero. Or, whoops, or the second space is equal to zero, or the third space is equal to zero, then we have what we're looking for. And I think that's probably what I'm going to do. It wasn't really what I had in mind. Um, what I had in mind was to do something like this. Say, we did a, we did a sum up here. We added the three together. What I was going to do was multiply them together, like this, because that 
if you think about what's in the squares, if you multiply these these top, if you multiply, oh, sorry, that, sh that should be a space. If you multiply this top three together, you're going to get a zero, right, because these are zero. So one times zero times zero is going to be zero. If you multiply this bottom row together, one times negative one times one is going to be negative one. And so we're looking for, we would be looking for a row that the sum adds up to one or negative one for O and the multiplier is not zero. That's what I was going to do. And that would maybe, maybe look more elegant, but when I think about what this is going to do at a lower level, and especially when I think about rewriting this in assembly language, I know that in assembly I would definitely do this because multiplying in assembly is a, is a pain in the ass. Um, well, at least with 6502 assembly it is because there was no multiplication. I think in newer chips there is, but still, um, at that lower level, multiplication, binary multiplication is not easy, let's just say. Um, and so, you know, I know that I know that at the lower level in assembly, I would do it, you know, compare to this 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 spot, and then branch. Let's see, it would be like branch if equal to such and such, and then compare to the next thing. Branch compare. I mean, I know that's how I would do it in assembly. So I think I'm going to just stick with that. To say, okay, we're just going to look at the three spots and see are any of them zero. Okay, and then. Actually, that just gave me an idea, and I got to think. Yeah, that's not actually necessary. Let me think here. Okay, I can actually. I mean, that is necessary, but I can do it. I can do it as we go through the loop. Let's grab the rest of this up here. I think this will make sense. Let's grab this for loop. All right. Let's say if it adds, if if they add up to one, then it's either like this top row or it's like this bottom row, right? Okay. If it's like the top row, we want to fill in one of the empty spaces and finish and end the turn. If it's like the bottom row. We don't, but we can't because it's already full. If we do this and it's a bottom row, it won't return right here, will it? Because it won't find any of these set to zero. So it will finish the for loop, and then here we can do what we need to do looking for, I'll uh, make a comment, look for, yeah another row. Okay. I think that's going to work. Let me walk through this. Okay, so if the row adds up to 1, then it's one of these two possibilities. If it's the top possibility, it'll find an empty space, fill it in, and return. If it's the bottom possibility, then it's not a row we can use, and so we're just going to loop around and, and try the next row. All right, that seems like it would make that seems like it would work. And we know it's got to find one at some point because otherwise we otherwise we've got a problem. And so then if if it doesn't find anything, we'll return 0 to show that it failed. That's still the same. Okay. So that's actually simpler than I thought it was going to be. Um next question is let's say it is looking at this top row which one of these do we want it to take right now it's going to take the first one because it's just going to loop through the three and it's going to take the first one it finds but like before with the first two turns I'd like to randomize it okay so how do I want to randomize that well we can do the same thing as before can do the same thing I did before with this with the start and end like up here 
Um, and I guess that's going to be the best way to do it. I was thinking I could, I could, I could have it do a fifty percent chance of either walking through forwards or backwards, but then it wouldn't start on the center. It would, it would never start on the center one that way. And so, yeah, let's just do it. Let's just do that. So I'm going to move. Start. I'm going to instantiate start or define or I, I forget sometimes what these things mean um but anyway i'm going to declare that's the word i'm looking for i'm going to declare start and end up there since i'm going to use them in multiple places in this function and then here i will do the same sort of thing i did before um i'm starting to feel like maybe i should push some of this off into another function but we'll see about that All right, and we can get rid of our for loop because now we have a while loop. I don't know, the while just seems more, the, the while works better for me doing this particular thing that I'm doing. So now I want a random number between zero and two. Um, I do not want to add the one this time because we're going between zero and two. And we want to we want to loop back to the beginning when it goes past two, set it back to zero. I think that's all going to be good. All right, so there's our play function now. Because now, what it will do on the third turn and every turn after that, and something is weird here. Whoops, dang, what I do. So now if the turn is if it's on the first turn it's just going to pick a random spot. If it's on the second turn it's going to pick a random spot other than that one. And on the third turn it's going to start looking through the rows just like looking for wins except now it's going to look for rows that are two thirds open that can be turned into a, a potential win and it's going to grab one of those. Okay. Let us see if that works. Um, one thing I have to fix, which I have here in my, whoops, what just happened? Uh, get out of there. Which I have here in my notes somewhere. Actually, I should have, th this is an org mode file, which I, I think I mentioned that before, but it's what I use for organizing basically everything anymore. Making these check boxes will let me mark things. One thing I need to do is fix the make file. <clears throat> because when I was doing this the other day, it, it didn't know to oops, rebuild. It didn't know to rebuild it every time I changed the source. So now, yeah. Okay, all kinds of undeclared crap. Alright. Um, implicit declaration of function random. Alright, that's... I know what that's about. Again, a lot of whoopsing. I need to add standard lib for random. I need to keep these in alphabetical order. Okay. That got rid of a few things. Okay, I still have winner block in there somewhere, and I'm I'm using J where I where I happen to find it. So let's see what that's about. It's all going to be in here. Look for play here somewhere because this is all I've worked on. Um, okay, where's winter block? Because we don't want that anymore. That's just in this debug statement. Which that debug statement is misleading now, anyway. Simplify that. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't have the I and J 
even involved anymore. So let's see. Try playing in. I guess I don't need I. Why did I need I and J before? Um. <laughs> Okay, I was using J as my loop. Yeah, and I don't have that loop anymore because I'm doing the start and end thing. Yeah, okay. So, let me think here. Yeah, that's okay. This is going to have changed. So, J is not J anymore. It's start. This this was a little misleading up here because it makes it makes me think it's talking about rows and columns, but it's not. It's actually talking about the row and then the one through three of the row, and then yeah. So that's that's fine. Um, putting in cell there. That's going to be start. Basically, J became start. Okay. Try making again. All right, it worked. And okay, that's interesting. It got down to the last move and then stuck. So what's it doing at that move? Oops. That's interesting. Um. Okay, so let's turn the debug on. That'll just give us some loads of information. Okay, and it's saying try playing in I equals 2, start equals 1, cell equals negative 1. Cell equals negative 1? How's that possible? Cells can't be negative 1. Okay. My, my debug statement wasn't very wasn't very good it was telling the it wasn't saying the, the number of the cell it was saying the contents of the cell so 2 1 why is it looping at that point when I equals 2 and start equals 1 Here's I equals 0, I equals 1, I equals 2. It's on 7, 8, and 9. And start equals 1. That should be 8. So why is it looping at that point? Try, try playing and... Uh, something wrong with my loop here. What's wrong with my loop? Um... Well, start is not equal to end. Oh, yeah. I need to increment start, don't I? As I go through the loop, I can't just leave start be the same thing once it gets... Um, it's just it's just trying the same thing over and over. I need to increment start after I compare it here. Or not, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let's not do it that way. 
need to do it after any things are done. Which means I gotta think about it. Yeah. Need the increment here. Because here it's taking care of making it the next thing. So I don't need to increment it there. That's already that's already been handled by this business up here. And here it doesn't matter because I'm returning. Okay, same thing down here. It needs to increment it after this stuff. Alright, that's going to fix that. So now we have a loop, but it's a different kind of loop. It's looping through that bottom seven, eight, nine. Huh. Kind of like it's doing the same sort of thing right here. Why would it be doing that? Well, start is not equal to end. Hmm. Well, let's add some more debugging. Okay, why is end zero? Oh, you know what? I think that... Huh, it's odd that end would get to be zero every time. Why would that be? If start is random, modulus 3, and then I set end equal to start, Let's do that. Oh, actually, I did it. Um, I can't just exit. I guess I can. It's just warning me that that's a bad, a bad thing to do. Why is it not exiting? Try playing an I equal. It's got to be going through this. I got to do that. Okay. All right. So X took the X took the corner. O took the center. Now we're into turn three. And X is looking through the rows. Looked through them all. Once. Okay, yeah, it started looking, looked through them all once looking for winning conditions. Then it looked through them all looking for blocking conditions. Now we're down here. Okay, so it looks at the top, the top row, total zero. Looks at the second row, total is negative one. Gets down to the third row. Okay, you've got um, a total of one. And it happens to set start equal to one and end equal to one. Okay, that seems fine. So, now it incremented start to make it 2. Okay, now end is equal to 1. 
it's trying cell number 9 because start happens to be equal to 2. Now this should, I should get different things. Because I'm using random unless I... make sure random is working the way I expect it to work. How about that? Um, Really random, oh, sorry. Random returns a long, not an int. I remember that from the man page. Yeah, random is some big ass number, like I figured. Oh, it's the same big ass number every time. That explains something. All right, so I need to look at random again. How do I make it not be the same big ass number every time? I suppose I have to seed it. Yeah. I need to seed it with S random, it looks like. bring up the same page, yeah. Okay, so I need to give S random a big S number too. Um, <laughs> about time. What's that return? Time returns a, a number. It oh, returns a time T value. We can turn that into a long. Let's try that. Uh, let's see. Did I do any other random numbers? I should probably. I probably need to seed it in the main function here. Let's just do that. Now, I'm gonna need time. What did it say? Time came from time.h. Okay. few arguments. I guess I wasn't paying close enough attention. What does time take as a... Oh. I guess I can just give it no. I don't need to... I don't need it in a structure. <clears throat> that does. Okay, now we're getting a different big S number every time. That's sort of, that's what we need. Alright. Yeah, I wasn't looping through I guess because it was getting the same although I don't, don't think that necessarily should have stuck the loop, but at least that's one problem fixed. It was getting the same random number every time, so it was going to play the same every time. Um, Alright. Let's get back to where we're debugging here. this exit 
game ended in a tie, but it didn't show the last move. Why does it not show the last move? Uh-oh, X won a game. Must not be smart enough yet. And now it's getting stuck again. Okay. Now we've got O won a game. Good grief. Everything's going wrong. Um, okay. We're going to have to turn the debugging back on. Or, well, the debugging is on. What did I turn off? Yeah, nothing, I guess. Um, okay. Okay, so we need to just... Okay, here's a game that X won. How did this happen? X took the bottom left, bottom right corner, and then O took a side. X took the opposite, and that, that seems correct, that X would take that up there. And then O had to block in between that, which makes sense. And then X took... Hmm... The opposite corner. Okay. Maybe you can't. I didn't stop to think that much about the tick, the actual strategy of tic tac toe. Um, think about this. If X takes a corner, and O takes a side. And then X takes another corner like so. O has no choice but to block, right? Yeah, now X can set up a winning condition by going over here. So O cannot take a side if X is in the corner, I guess is what's that, what that's telling us. I actually thought that wasn't the case, but... So, the thing that tells me is O needs to go in the center. If X doesn't take the, if X doesn't start in the center, O needs to take the center. Is that what that means? If O goes there, then X, let's, let's say X goes over here. Well, then O can, yeah, then it's not a problem, because then O, then o goes there to block. X has to go here, O goes here, and X goes here, and so, yeah, it all, it ends at a tie. But, hmm. Yeah, if O goes there and X goes up here, O is screwed already. Because he has no choice but to go here. And then X can set up two wins. Win either here or here. So O has to go... O can't go in the side if X goes in, in a corner. Okay. What if O goes in another corner? And you're probably even more screwed because then X could go here. O would have to go here. X would go here. And o, no, no. Then O would go there, and then that all ends in a tie also. What if O goes in the corner and the X goes across the way? Yeah, then you got a problem because then O goes in the middle to block, but then X can go here has to go there, and then that's a win for X also. So O has to go, really O has to go in the center. If X doesn't go in the center to start the game, O has to go in the center. Okay, well, that's what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out how to make this thing just smart enough to force a tie. So on O's first turn here, we want to say if... Or no, that's sorry, that's X's first turn. 
on O's first turn, we want to start out by saying if board 5, if the number 5 spot, which is the center, is equal to 0, take it. Otherwise, then do all this business. Okay? So take the center square if it's available. Otherwise, look randomly for a different one. And the only way it would be not available would be if X had already taken it. So that's what that's gonna that's how that's gonna work. Oh, got another win already. Alright, what happened here? Um This one, gotta scroll down a little bit. Okay, and this one, X went somewhere, O went in the center. Okay. Why is it starting out? so many things filled in. That's weird. Something's weird. Oh, yeah. Can't do this. Yeah. Well, no, wait a second. If turn equals zero, take a random space. I could return there, but I, yeah, I guess I, let's return. Because it's done with this, it's done looking for a play at this point. Plus, I wanted to return to show that um, to show that the turn was successful. Now, this one, if it can't, yeah, I need to return. I, I think my problem was here because I was taking the I was taking that space, but then I was also looking for another space. That's not really fair. Um, I can't be given O extra turns. So if that, go ahead and do it in return. Otherwise, yeah. And if it gets down here, it should return zero to show that nothing, even though it was turn number one, it couldn't find a space, which would tell me that there's definitely a problem. Okay. Still got a loop, but... Oops. Why is it... Oh, I, yeah... It's because it's debugging and hold on. Okay. All right. Starting with a blank thing. This time X took the center, which that's just random. So it should take anything. O took a side. There again, that's random too. It takes something else if the center is taken. The next took a side. O blocked. That still works. The blocking still works. Uh oh. X just set up a winning situation here. Because X is going to have two places to win now. O blocked one of them. The first one it found. And then X went in the OK. That that one worked. Except that we, we still don't want it to be able to win. But um, OK, X took the center. O took a side. And X took a side. O blocked. X is going to have another... I, I think we've got another issue here, that if X goes in the center, O can't take a side. I think that's going to be a problem. Because X won again. Oh, X on the side. Okay. O in the center. That's that's the part we just fixed. Then X took a corner. O there. Now this should just end up in a tie, like usual. Okay, now, now we're getting to a problem. All right. X is sitting here, looks for the win, there's no win, looks for the tie, there's no tie. Then starts looking through the rows. So one, two, three, adds up to zero, four, five. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Needs to be another condition here. 
because it is going to get to a point late in the game, which is where we're at with this game, when um, there isn't going to be a row with two empty spaces and one of yours. That's what O is looking for here right now. O is trying to find a, a, a row with an O and two empty spaces, and there aren't any of those, and so it's just looping over and over. Um, yeah. So we can't have that. So, okay. So if it gets down here, it's looking through these eight. But the question is going to be, why does it... Yeah, it's, it's, it gets a... It gets a loop going somehow. Um, in this case, it was looking at the fourth row, which is cells 2, 5, and 8. The center, the one, the row down the center, because yeah, it added up to negative one, so that'd be a row it would want to look at. But then it just started looping through them. Hmm. Why would it do that? Because when start and end equal the same thing, they should stop looping. While start does not equal to end. So why would it do this loop again? Oh, okay. I got it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My, my loop idea here was a little overly clever, maybe. Um, the reason is, here when start gets incremented, let's say start is 1, it gets incremented to 2, then it comes through here, blah, 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 blah. Then it gets incremented to 3. Then... It doesn't, you know, it still doesn't compare here. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I know what I need to do. Let's just make this an, an infinite while loop. And here's where we need to bail out. If start equals end, then we're done. That's what we need to do. Um, because pretty sure that'll be right. Let's say it starts at, let's say here it's two, it rolls it up to three, and then it sets it back to zero. Yeah. That should be correct. Now do I need to do the same thing up here? Probably so. Because yeah, because I'm setting that back after I increment it. Oops. I think that's right. Okay. X takes a side square. O takes a center. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Game ended in a tie. Why is it not showing the last move? Why is it saying game ended in a tie when it's not actually a tie yet? Oh, okay. I, yeah, I understand why. I, I still haven't fixed the one thing I mentioned. Okay, so... 
it's turn one, that's taken care of. Turn two, we'll, we'll come back to that stuff. Turns three and on, we've got it looking through, trying to find a good row, a row that has two spaces left for it to, to try to create a winning condition. But what if it can't find one? Then we've still got to do something else. We've still got to find a move. And at that point, we might as well take a random one, I would say. There's not going to be much left at that point anyway, so let's just take a random one. So I'm going to go up here and get the same code we used up here. To take a random spot. And this is definitely starting to, to feel like the sort of thing I should refactor in another into a separate function. Because, okay. So we've after we've gone through the for loop here, checked our eight possible rows, then okay. If we still haven't returned which, if we still haven't returned out of this by finding a spot, then we want to do the start to end random thing. And then at the end, we can just return if we haven't found anything. Okay. So that should make it possible, that should allow it to find any square if it can't find a good one. It'll just find anything. Okay, it still didn't find anything. <laughs> uh, and x1. So we still have a problem with wins. Um, might not have my stuff lined up here. Else, yeah, go through those. Yep, 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 yep. Go through. Then take a random spot. Well, it finished because X1, that's right. That's not, that's not a problem with that. That's, that's a problem with the fact that it still isn't forcing a tie. Okay, that's what I was just fixing. I just need to make sure that it actually plays out all nine if it goes to a tie. Okay, yeah, game it in a tie, and then a tie, and then a tie, and a tie, and a tie. Need one that didn't end in a tie here. Come on. I know it's possible because I just saw one. Good grief. Okay, well, think in that case I know it's still I know it still needs to be a little smarter but let's move on to another thing to do here mark that one off we went to loop and do multiple games and keep track of the wins and ties okay so what I'm gonna do here for now because I'm already over an hour I wanted to cut this off about an hour or so. I'm just going to have it play a thousand games. And I'm going to say I'm going to have keep track of wins. Here, let's keep track of X wins. O wins and ties. 
and games. Okay. All right. Every game it plays, we want to count that game, increment game. And then when we play a game, we'll have R equal the result of that game. I think we already have, I think play a game, yeah, play a game already returns the winner as int. All right. And then we'll say if actually, let's see. Let's do that. Let's do this. Instead of wins, let's do this in an array. Much more elegant. Um, let's just call it wins, or, yeah, that's fine, but it's going to be an array, and it's going to start out as zero, 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 okay. Play a game, then, is going to return a result, and we're going to increment r plus one, because remember, if o is the winner, it's going to be it's going to return a negative 1, so we want to increment that up to 0. So the wins up here, the wins array is going to hold the wins for O, and then a tie, and then X is going to be what order those things are in. Okay. Now, I also want to say, if it hits a tie, I want it to stop. So that, or Not if it hits a tie. If it hits a win, I want it to stop. So just for now, so I can figure out why it's still not having all ties. We want it to stop if it hits them. So we'll say if um, r um, equals 0, no, that would be a tie. We'll just say if r, which means if r is not 0, if it's a win, then we want to break out of this loop. Okay. And then we want to report on the the results here. So we'll just say wins and we'll start with games wins or let's see X wins O wins and ties. Games is in games. X wins is in wins two. O wins is in wins zero. And ties is in wins one. Okay. So if it doesn't hit it, if it doesn't hit any wins, it's going to play through all thousand games and then report. If it does hit one, it's going to break out. So I can see what it's doing. Okay, it took eight games that time to hit a win. And I just saved everything into logs so we can go back and see what's going on. Okay, X started in the middle. O took a side. That's what I was saying. That might that might be a problem. Might not be able to let O take a side if X is in the middle. Because then X played there, O played there. Yeah, and then X has, yeah. I think if X plays in the middle, O has to start in a corner. Or otherwise, it's just, otherwise X can force a win. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not a problem. So come back to our play, uh, take a turn. I look for play. Okay. So on the second turn here, on O, here, let, let's mark these with a couple of comments. X first turn. Push that out there a little bit. O's first turn. Okay. We already said if O can take the center, O needs to take the center. But if O can't take the center, 
Then we just said, okay, then just take a random spot. Well, that's not going to be good enough. We need to take a corner if O can't take the center. So we need to choose from 1, 3, 7, or 9, right? 1, 3, 7, or 9 as the, po as the four possibilities. So we want a random number. We want a random number chosen from one of those. So how could we do that? Well, let's say you take a random number. Actually, you know what? It doesn't matter which corner you take. All the corners are the same if X is in the center. So we can just take one because they're all all the if x is in the center all the corners are the same it doesn't matter how you turn the board so we can just get rid of a lot of this and just say else board one equals player right That makes sense to me. If X is if X is not in the center, take the center. Otherwise, take take the corner. That makes sense to me. Okay. Thousand games all ended in a tie. Another thousand all ended in a tie. Let's Make it ten thousand. Can you believe it plays a thousand games that fast? Plus, it's printing out stuff while it's doing it. Let's um, turn off the debugging so it won't print out so much stuff. Okay, let's um, let's time it. 0.18 seconds to play 10,000 games. Pretty fast, huh? All right. I think I'm going to call this there. It's uh, over an hour now. Um, let's look at the design notes. Decide what happens next. Or actually, let, well, yeah, let's look at the design notes. Okay. I think we've got it smart enough to have all ties, but let's um, let's make a note to double check with like a billion games. We've got it looping and doing multiple games, reporting totals, but I would like to have that be um, entered on the command line. I'd like to be able to just, and without putting, I'd like to be able to say how many games on the command line instead of putting it in the code. Um, could still do some refactoring. I think some of that stuff with um, looping through some of that stuff with finding us finding an open space could possibly be split off because the um, the look for play function is just getting kind of long, and there's some stuff in it that I copied from one place to another. Eh, I don't know. I'll think about that. It's not bad, but there's probably some simplifying that could be done there. Or, sh or shuffling part of it out to a smaller function. I fixed the make file, marked that done. I'm gonna add some defines to make some things more legible. That kind of goes along with the documentation. So let me come up here. We'll um, part four coming up. Clean, clean it up and test or test and clean it up. We don't need to fix the make file anymore, we just need to work on this other stuff. So, okay, that'll be part four, which should be coming soon, because I want to get this done. Um, all right. Hope you found this interesting, and I will be back with part four pretty soon to finish up, I think I think I'll finish this up in the next, you know, the next hour or so. Um, could spend a lot of time just kind of tinkering, cleaning things up, adding documentation and stuff. So I don't really know how long that'll take, but it'll take as long as it takes. So 
Um, thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting, and uh, hope to see you next time.